Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and the Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing one of the best thriller novels I have read in a long, long while, and that is Ballistic, book number three in the Gray Man series by Mark Greeny. This is... This series is becoming like crack cocaine in words to me. I am just addicted to these stories. Like, I haven't been addicted to a thriller series since C.J. Box's Joe Pickett, and you know how much I love those. But I am starting to fall in love with these um, Mark Greeny Gray Man books. And maybe, maybe saying I'm addicted to the books like a person would be addicted to crack cocaine is not the best comparison considering... The book is about the uh, Mexican cartels and the flow of drugs over the American-Mexican border. Um, that being said, this book is dope! Getting dope! And I am going to rave and rant about this for a little bit. Let's start with the covers. All the Gray Man books have similar covers. They've got a, a dark silhouette running away from us. This time he looks like he's in some sort of Mexican village. And you can see that the kind of the same tone with all of these. Pull this one out. It's got the same thing. One thing I do love about what the publisher has done is they've made all of the spines match. So it looks great on the shelf. So let's give the publisher props for keeping a consistent look to the series, at least in these paperbacks I'm collecting. Because they look great. Many of you might know Mark Greeny not only from the Gray Man series, but he was one of the many authors that took over the Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan series. And he's written a lot of these Jack Ryan books, all of which I still continue to collect because I'm a huge Jack Ryan fan. Yeah, let's see, Mark Greeny. There we go. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up in case you hadn't heard of one or the other. Maybe you know Mark Greeny from this. Maybe you know him from The Gray Man. He does both. Dude's got a lot of talent. So let's talk about Ballistic. Where did it go? Here it is. Ballistic. So these books, I mean, Mark Greeny, one of the things he does, which is a little bit better than a lot of the thriller writers out there, is he, he just, he pays attention to the details. I mean, these books are getting longer and longer and thicker and thicker. I imagine the first Gray Man book was maybe 100,000, 125,000 words. This one feels like it's about 150,000 to 200,000 words, maybe. And it looks like most of the rest of them are pushing 200,000 words, which means he can put a lot of plot, a lot of character development, and a lot of detail into these books and it shines forth. I mean, he might not be getting as detailed as Tom Clancy, but he's certainly building a lot. There's a lot of world building in these um, in these books. One of the I wanted to read a passage just to, so you kind of get a fla a flavor for um, what I'm talking about. You know, you can write a scene, and you know, this is some writing advice for those of you that want to be writers who follow my channel for the writing advice. Um, you can just simply say, well, the guy got off the plane and, and, and went to, you know, but this is the way he describes a person getting off of a plane. And just pay attention to the amount of detail that goes into this. The banker stepped out of the 19-passenger Fairchild Metroliner turboprop and onto the tarmac in Manzanillo, two hours south of Puerto Vallarta on the Pacific coast. That's got a lot of detail in it, and it's fantastic. It sets the scene. The sun was high in the sky, and the banker flipped his 4800 Moss Lippo sunglasses down from the top of his head to protect his eyes. That's the way it all reads. I mean, he tells you what sunglasses the guy's wearing. He tells you exact the exact make model of plane that the guy was flying on and how many passengers it fits. And it reads real quick. It's not like he's bogging down in these descriptions, but it's very Tom Clancy-esque in putting a detail of everything that you see into the story so you know exactly what's going on, even to the style of clothes that each character wears. It's just magical the way he does this. I love it. 
I absolutely love it. And the scenes are cinematic. Let's get into the nitty gritty of this plot. Like I said, it's about the Mexican drug cartels. In fact, Mark Greeny dedicates this book to the police and law enforcement agencies on both our side of the border and the Mexican side of the border who are dealing with this never ending war on drugs. And so let's get into this. That's one of the reasons I brought these. This is my favorite trilogy about the war on drugs, the Don Winslow's The Power of the Dog, The Cartel, and The Border. These things are magnificent. And this book really, really um, is a great companion piece to these because I think a lot of what Don Winslow is doing in these books and a lot of what Mark Greeny is doing in this book is similar in... Examining the frustrations of our failed war on drugs. And, um, you know, just if you followed my channel at all, you know I worked in law enforcement in certain capacities for 14 years or more. And I see it daily. I see the daily ramifications of this drug war that we're fighting. And now we get the gray man right in the middle of it. So let's talk about this book specifically. Our gray man has went through many adventures. Been chased by Americans, been chased by Russians, been chased by Russians and Americans. He's just chased by everybody. He's on, in hiding. He is now nine weeks in hiding in the Amazon jungle. And um, one of the Russian guys, one of the Russian bad guys finds him. And so the fight is on. And we open up with just a great action set piece, very cinematic. of A chase scene, an escape scene. Um, um, there's a character called the Manhunter. That's the Russian guy that finds him. And, uh, our uh, hero, the Gray Man, escapes with the help of some bees, some killer bees, swarms of killer bees, some crocodiles, some adventures in these dark rivers. I mean, the jungle scares me. I'll be honest, the jungle scares me. I thought that the, um, opening to the, um, Gray Man itself was one of the best openings to a thriller I've ever read. And this compares to it in every way. You can just feel how dangerous and claustrophobic the Amazonian jungle is, with, especially with its dark rivers full of monsters and horrors that you don't even want to come across. And our gray man has to escape through these things. And he's being chased through these things. And it's just absolutely riveting. Right from the get-go, I knew I was in for, like I said, it's crack, it's crack cocaine in the form of storytelling. We get, uh, well, anyway, we won't say whether uh, the gray man escapes or not escapes or how he escapes or maybe he doesn't escape. But, but anyway, he ends up in the midst of this sort of drug cartel, Mexican mafia sort of um, world. Now he's landed in this and he's got some flashback scenes where he... Um, where he flashes back to um, years, well, he's 37 right now in this book, so that's how old he is in this book. And so he flashes back 15 or so years to when he was in the, he was a prisoner of war or something like that in, the, in Laos. And um, he's with a guy named Eddie, his friend, and they're prisoners of war. And um, anyway, things have come full circle because in the midst of this, uh, Eddie was a, uh, Eddie, they both got out of the prisoner of war camp, and Eddie, and the gray man went on to become the gray man, and Eddie went on to become like a DEA agent uh, to fight the drug cartels, but he's been killed, and now um, the gray man is now kind of, he's escaped the Amazon jungle, Amazon jungle, and now he's in the midst of this cartel world, still hiding out, meeting mysterious, mysterious um, people, mysterious secret agents, the drug lords. Oh my gosh. Now these guys are brutal. One of my favorite thriller tropes, like I said, is the Mexican cartel, the Cesarios, the, um, this, this war for, on drugs in the Mexican border. It's just so brutal. It's so brutal. And we get our, um, appetite. The America's got an appetite for drugs and, uh, the people that did get high, they don't realize the the carnage they are causing 
in the cities of Mexico amongst innocent women, men, and children. And uh, just so people can get high here in America. And, and we're dealing with this right here. And we find out that this Eddie guy, his friend, his pr former prisoner of war camp buddy, has um, been killed and... Um, and now uh, the gray man is embroiled in sort of the this game, this gamesmanship and this chase and these uh, high stakes, the high stakes world of the Mexican cartels. I don't want to really get into it any more than that, other than, um, you know, that uh, Eddie was once hired, his buddy Eddie was, was a, once a, was a hired assassin to take out a lot of these cartel guys. And so um, this is very dangerous stuff. Uh, Lisante... Muerte, the death virgin, the gangsters have sculptures of Our Lady of Death. This is an important uh, sort of theme that runs through this book that I really enjoyed because I have seen the uh, Mexican gangs. In my small corner of law enforcement, I know for a fact that the Mexican um, gangs are big into the Santa Muerte. And in fact, I've seen some of them sculpt and draw such beautiful, beautiful pictures of this um, sort of this uh, saint that they worship. And it's, it's some of the, the artwork is just exquisite, just exquisite. And they, they really do worship this. Um, it's kind of like a new uh, religion for them. At least some of them, not all of them. Anyway, that aside, um, there's a love story in this, which I liked. I think it's, uh, I kept wondering if the love story was going to be turned into a betrayal. I was just waiting and waiting for that as, uh, uh, you know, as uh, because the person that um, our gray man has sort of fallen in love with is, uh, there's some connections there that go back into his past. Um, the, uh, and then we just get into like characters like the spider who are just ruthless killers and uh, they just, one of the scenes, now, I kind of took a little bit, I thought that the gray man was going a little soft and on target. Um, he's had a little bit of a heart, but this is the gray man that I like. I wanted to read you this passage, too, because this is the gray man that I love. If I can find the passage, I should mark these before I... So, yeah, let's read this. This is, this is some badass stuff. Garza looked at the gray man. You know nothing. You are just a rich American. You don't understand our culture. Actually, I'm getting a hang of it, the gray man said. I'm going to chop off your head and put it in a bag. Does that seem a little like your culture? Go to hell! Most likely, the gray man said. But in the meantime, Gentry sat on the box in front of the victim. Names and numbers. What? I need the names and numbers. You give me the uh, the others to your organization and I'll do it quick and fast. You mean you will kill, kill me quick and fast? That's the best deal I can offer. And if I don't give you the names and numbers? The gray man looked at his watch, shrugged. Buddy, I got all day. That's the ruthless gray man I love. Absolutely great book. Oh, uh, well, there's the author. Absolutely great book. Like I said, 10 out of 10. Love these books. I'm going to be reading them. I'm going to be reading through them all summer, leaving reviews of all of them. I'm that excited about them. These are just really good books. Can't wait to get to the next one.